Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. You can check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. We've got some amazing weekly content that you guys don't want to miss. We've got a podcast called Diving In with Funny and Jesse. And you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel, or our second YouTube channel for the visual. And we've got a Patreon. You guys can feel free to become members and we'll appreciate. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far and is yet to subscribe. So if you haven't subscribed, feel free to subscribe now before we get into the video. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. And today we're going to be reacting to why he chose Islam, US to Egypt. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Hello, my name is Yusuf, South Sinai Dahab, Red Sea. This is my story of how I became a Muslim and how I ended up in paradise. I have finally made it to Dahab. It is stunning out here on the Red Sea of Egypt. I've heard a lot about this place over the years and I'm just super excited to finally be here and see what it's all about and you'd never expect there to be this perfect little hippie town out here in the middle of the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt but it is true this place has an incredible charming vibe and honestly when I travel around the world I try to find the most interesting and inspiring people that I can find so when my friends told me yesterday about a guy named Yusuf I immediately contacted him and you guys are not gonna believe what this guy has to say he's full of insight full of knowledge and I'm just really excited to tell you his story. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace and blessings to all of you. May your camels have camels. I spent most of my life uh, overseas. When I was 7 to 14, my parents were missionaries, so I grew up in uh, Guatemala. And then I came back to the States till 78. I left in 79 back to Guatemala. I met a French woman, moved to France, stayed there 21 years. And then later uh, to Holland for 22 years. I left everything in Holland. At 57 years old, I had a life, a beautiful wife, beautiful children in university, a beautiful house, a beautiful job, shoes coming out of my ears. All this that I had, and I gave it up. Why Dahab? Dahab uh, just happened like that, really. I was uh, busy promoting diving and technical diving in Charm, and we have some of the deepest and the best places here. You know that, Blue Hole. So I promoted technical diving and all the, all the dive gear that went with it. I left in 2010, and I came back uh, in 2017. So I was uh, seven years away. But now, Yusuf has come back to Dahab with a completely different mission in mind. I've come here to uh, basically uh, speak to the next generation, which is very important to me. And uh, I came with a message from my father. And the message is this, it's called the law of one. The law of one is you have two choices in life, either to serve yourself or to serve others. If you serve yourself, you're not gonna pass the test of life. If you serve others, you serve others with love and forgiveness. Now in the days that we're living, and we see that all these love generators are being shut down, families are being separated, churches and mosques and also synagogues are being closed. Now is more than ever that the people really need to understand that service to others is the only way that we're going to generate love. That's so well said. A lot of people have never heard of Dahab. How would you explain it to them? What draws you to it so much? Let's put it this way. In the Bible, also in the Quran, Egypt has always been a place of safety and learning for God's chosen, okay? We start with Abraham, then we have Joseph, then we have Moses, and then we have Jesus. Now, if you, if you know these characters, not one of these characters was Egyptian but they benefited from Egypt. Now Moses wandered with the, the children of Israel in, uh, in, in this desert. So this desert is a chosen place of God. This is the cradle where God keeps us very, very safe. His full-time job is serving rice pudding on the streets of Dahab. Since I'm a chemist, I used to work in the oil field for uh, 20 years. I know how to mix things very well. Egyptians love rice pudding, but I did it with a bit of a twist. Plus, I ice it down since Dahab is the South Sinai. It's very, very warm. Inside the freezer, all the pudding. Look at that. Today, we have 77 puddings. These things are like cheese. So you can turn it upside down. Wow. I'm going to come out. They're 20 pounds each for uh, they can have an extra topping of either or cinnamon and coconuts for free. If they want to have other toppings like raisins, sugar peanuts, 
caramel sauce mm -hmm. or honey, that's five pounds more. These are unsweetened raisins. Want to try one, Drew? Yeah. Come on, man. These are good raisins. Very good. But they're not the they're not the Californian. Yeah. Right? That's true. I grew up on raising a kid. I'm, I'm legend for my pudding. I mean, I make it better than many, many mothers in this country. I give on, on first go customers a money back guarantee. I tell them take one bite. If they don't like it, they can give me back the pudding and I'll give them back the money. How did you think about rice pudding? There's so many things you could sell. It was something that was basically inspired. Yeah. Mm. There's a guy here that was selling uh, Come, let's go outside. Yeah, I'll show you how this whole thing came out. There's a guy here that sells uh, kosher. I don't know if you know. Yeah, I, I just had kosher in Cairo. It was amazing. And uh, he was going to retire, so I, I bought this cart. And it's over here. It's retired. I had it. I fixed it up myself because mm -hmm. I originally trained as a cabinet builder and a carpenter. And then I had it painted by one of our one of our painters here. This is the original baby right here. It's like an antique item now. Oh, this is cool. That's so cool. He rides his bicycle up and down the main roads of Dahab in the blazing hot sun that can reach up to 50 degrees Celsius or 122 Fahrenheit. Okay. And I average roughly about uh, 18 to 25 kilometers every day. Yeah, good exercise. Sure is. And then as I'm riding, I say, Rose de Blaben, Rose de Blaben, Rose de Blaben Metallic, Rice Pudding, Rice Pudding, come and get it folks, Rice Pudding. <laughs> All right. Do you like his rice pudding? Yusuf's rice pudding has gotten so popular that pretty much everyone knows him in town. You could call him a local celebrity. Well, it's beautiful because we're all a family and uh, we all love each other and we take care of each other. And we have to be comfortable with each other so that we can be aware of their needs. <laughs> Everything okay? Yes, alhamdulillah. Can I do anything to help you? No? <laughs> okay, great. Yusuf has a spiritual energy like none other, and just speaking with him gives you this feeling that he knows things that many of us don't. Now, I, I was aware of everything that's happening now three and a half to four years ago. I knew that at one point people would be frozen in the place that they're at. That was the first lockdown. Lockdown no, number two is coming in October, and then they're going to put everybody in their box and vaccinate them. As you may have been able to tell by his name, Yusuf converted to Islam and I was really curious to learn about what inspired him to do so. I converted to Islam about 14, 15 years ago. See, my parents were, were missionaries, they were evangelical missionaries, so I was raised with the Bible between my teeth. But when I fell in love with Islam, I know the, I know the Quran better than many Imams because I read it and I studied it very, very deeply. What was the first moment where you said, I really like this religion? Well, it was uh, one third of the way through the Quran. I had this feeling that welled up from inside and hit my head. And uh, it was a tingling sensation. And I said, holy crap, uh, I'm a Muslim. Yeah, that was, uh, that was basically the revelation. And you, you're praying five times a day and you're... Five times a day and I fast during Ramadan, sometimes during the week. It does me good. Amazing. You mind me asking your age? Oh, my age? I'm 60. 60. I, I was born in 1960. This is the year uh, 2020. So yeah, 60 and 60. That was really an awesome experience to meet Yusuf. I, that's a guy I can talk to for literally days and days and, and never uh, get bored. I mean, this guy has, has seen everything and he's, he knows so much and, and he's just a really cool person just to connect with. And so it's been a really awesome experience. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's been really spontaneous, but you know, these are the, the ones that always turn out the best, right? When, when they're not planned. So um, I'm gonna continue traveling around Egypt, around Sinai. It is just incredible here. I can't even tell you guys. I hope you've been enjoying these stories. Uh, they've been a lot of fun to make and um, a lot more coming soon. So I hope you guys are all well. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you tomorrow. If you had one message to say to the world, what would you say to them? Well, it'd be the law of one. The law of one is very simple. Service to self is a losing game. You're gonna probably have to come back and do it all over again. Service to others in love and forgiveness. This is a lifetime lesson and it's not easy to do, but in the long, in the long run, when you serve somebody, every action has a reaction. So you'll get a positive reaction from your action. What are some crazy things that you've done in your life? I had a pretty crazy life, especially working in the, working in the oil field. Uh, I, I think in my life, uh, some of the craziest things I've had is I've had guns pulled out on me and people which, wanting to kill me. Which country? Uh, Nigeria was a country for sure. 
uh, angle. Also, I, I had guns pulled on me there. Like pointed at your head? No, right at my chest. They said, we're gonna kill you. So I grabbed the gun and put it up against, right up against my heart and said, kill me now. Really? Yeah, yeah. And, why why uh, did they want to kill you? Uh, usually for money. Did, did you pay them? No, I didn't pay them. Uh, I didn't have any money to give them, but they're usually drunk, you know, drunk on drugs. And they set up a like a, a, a barricade across the road. So I used to travel in Angola with an ice chest full of beer and a carton of Marlboro. So usually I'd stop, give them a couple of beers, a couple of packs of Marlboro, and that would be okay. Is there anything in this world that you don't know? No, there isn't anything in this world I don't know. You know everything? Yeah, I, was, I got a download about two weeks ago. It's pretty cool. <laughs> but I had to pass my test. That's what I came here for. Really I really look to find yeah. inspiring people and people doing cool stuff around yeah. the world and it's not often that I come by someone like you. So thank you for being awesome. Well, man, listen, uh, tomorrow you get to see yeah. the pudding, my operation on my Great. bicycle, how I'm all set up. I would love and, to do it. Uh, I'll show you my old cart. I used to use a cart also. Great. That guy is cool, but kind of out of his mind in a good way. And that was just, I was expecting just to kind of interview him for two minutes and that went on for like, I don't know, 30 minutes and he's got a lot of stuff to say. Oh man, I'm excited to watch this. Let's cut for now. Let's cut for now. I'm dead right now. How did you two meet? We met in the hotel. Tell yeah. her, Catherine. Tell the story. Yeah, I have been in the same hotel with Joseph for a month, quite a long time. And you just met from being in the hotel? Yeah. And then just we talked just like two, one month ago. That's right. Yeah, one month ago. And he asked you to help him cook or you asked him? Oh no, my Korean roommate asked me. Yeah, asked me whether I'm interested in rice pudding cooking. I said yes. Yeah. And so what do you, how do you work with him every day? What are you doing? Well, uh, we started at night and then get all things prepared. And then we started cooking. It's not easy job. <laughs> yeah, because especially the kitchen is very hot. Like sweating, like, like in a sauna. Really? Yeah. Do you, do you enjoy it? Yeah, I really enjoy it. What it is is that she gets uh, better than a day's pay, better than an Egyptian's a day pay, for working three hours. If she's working from nine to midnight, means that she can enjoy Dahab the rest of the the yeah. rest of the 21 hours. Where there's people that, that, that work and live here that are basically slave to their job, so they can't really enjoy sure. Dahab for what it really Great. is. Sounds like you have a good deal here. Yeah, because uh, one time my roommate worked at a sandwich shop, it was like eight to nine hours and the pace not good. Right. Yeah. And where do you originally come from? Me, China. Which part of China? Guangzhou. Amazing. I'm Drew Binsky and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and ring that little bell so you can get notified on all my upcoming videos as I take you to every single country in the world. He has some really good content. I think you guys have suggested other stuff by him as well. I always enjoy how Every convert has their own unique story. Is it convert or event? Whichever one. I think I can use both of them in the interchangeable way, but otherwise they all have these unique and interesting stories, which is very, very nice. Who doesn't love Egypt? Egypt is, I think, one of those places that you just want to visit in your life love the place otherwise this was very very interesting i hope you guys enjoyed it as much as i did and yeah make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video